All right. Welcome in everyone to the to the chat here. We're gonna let this breathe for a second, see if we get the, the fifth green check mark coming in here pretty quick. Just waiting here for a moment. Then we will get to some great football talk. This is a big, big week for, for everything going on. Almost there. Come on. There it is. Five check marks, everybody. And welcome into Building the Broncos. I'm your host, Carl Dumbler, and Mr. Nick Kendall is off doing well, Nick Kendall thinks. No, he's actually at a baseball game watching the Seattle Mariners. I keep forgetting never heard of, have a baseball never, team. I know, yeah. Yeah, never heard but, of them. But uh, you know, our his loss is our gain because we get <laughs> Mr. Luke Patterson coming in here. You know, I feel like now we're just gonna be hosts together for forever. You know, I just, know that's it, what man. it's gonna work. But I uh, know Nick's out there exploring mountains and watching these crazy I don't know how he stays awake at baseball games, but uh yeah, no, it's <laughs> it's crazy, man. Going from MHI on Saturday over to building the Broncos here on Tuesday night. I'm super pumped to be here. Carl's you know. Huge news came today from uh, Broncos. Obviously, there was some fallout still from the Peter King article yesterday and all kinds of juicy stuff we got to get to as the Broncos travel to Minnesota. That's right. Wheels were up. Uh, I think they've probably landed by now there in Minnesota. So they start practice tomorrow, the joint practices. I love Vic Fangio. He said, you know, the nice thing here is it's we go from uh, 90 teammates to 180 teammates out there on the field <laughs> and getting a little time to evaluate against some different defenses. So yeah, we're, we're very excited. You guys could join us here and, and get to talk about maybe the most important week of the entire season. Honestly, I mean, because it could be the week that they do decide on the quarterback and uh, who, who's going to be the, the starter. I, I really think these couple practices, the game on, on Saturday, this is, this is going to be big. So we're very excited to get the ch- chance to talk to you about that. Uh, but before we get to all that, I want to make sure everybody knows uh, that this is Building the Broncos. You can find us at BTB Football Pod on Twitter. And, of course, you can find Luke uh, at Luke Patterson LP and me at Carl Dummler MHH and Nick at Nick Kindle MHH. Of course, also log into our uh, at Mile High Huddle Twitter account. Lots of things going on there. Every article that's posted that's where you're going to find it. And uh, so just lots of things going on. We've got lots of information, articles galore coming out there. Of course, then make sure I don't have my hat today. Completely forgot it at the house. But uh, of course, Luke's on it. And uh, you can go get your swag over at huddleuppod.com. Make sure you head on over there. Uh, just lots and lots of good things. I'm looking for a couple things for, for my kids coming up so they can get some, some mile high huddle swag going on. Really some B2B football. Of course, is what they got to get. But uh, <laughs> make sure also that uh, you guys are joining up with our Facebook.com forward slash Mile High Huddle Pod Facebook group. Again, it lets you kind of know everything that's going on, every show that's coming up. We've got some great ones this week. And if you're on YouTube, one of the best things that you guys could do for each and every one of us is subscribe, like, and share. If you're on Facebook, if you can go up there and like, we've already got five. We've got Teddy Bridgewater already. Man, Luke's already, or, uh, not Luke. Uh, our, our other quarterbacks have already been passed up, man. man. Dang. Sorry about that. Yeah. Sorry, Drew Locke, Dang. but, uh, but no, we've already got five up there. So appreciate that from everybody. But, uh, if you guys can click on that, it just really helps get all of our shows out there to everybody out there. We just really appreciate it. But again, we've got a great show for you guys getting a chance to talk a little bit, a little Bronco football once again. Like I said, they uh, had a little bit of practice this morning. Sounds like a little, just kind of warm up, nothing too big. Got on the airplane, headed on up there to Minnesota, get a little bit of better air in that that dome stadium than what's going on in Denver right now. No, oh, that's uh, I'm sorry, man. I hear that they. I, I'm not in Denver, so it's gnarly. It's gnarly to be sure, but you know, like the rest of the world, everything is falling here, and it's just all to do about nothing, if you ask me. The air, air is supposed to be clearing up, um, and then it makes me wonder. You know, the NFL doesn't cancel games. We know that. Just see last year, so they're not canceling games to, due to poor air quality. I'm almost certain uh, of that. If they're not canceling games because of the other thing, but uh, Jimmy Smith, what's up? Uh, saying it wasn't just practice; it was a walkthrough, and I had to get in okay. real quick and get in a quick jab on this because. Uh, based on the training camp practices I've been to, they've been pretty low key, pretty laxed. So I can only imagine the media out there today. I was not out there today, but I can only imagine 
a walkthrough practice with the 2021 Denver Broncos right now. Hopefully they're saving it for Minnesota. I've been saying, hopefully they're saving it for the pads. Hopefully they're saving it, you know, for Minnesota. Now it's finally here. Preseason game. Number one, Drew Locke has been named the starting quarterback. Yeah. Well, I want to get to a couple people here in the, in the comments. Gary leads Palmer, always a, a guy that's showing up for every show. Hi, Luke and Carl. Go Broncos, Denver Bronco for life. State of being. Really appreciate that. Falling sloth. Hello, Broncos country. Uh, yes, always a good hello. Got John Libick coming in here. Good evening, gentlemen. Right What's back on, at you. And got Evan Jeremy saying, I think Broncos will be good this season. We will see. I'm I'm excited to get this first game under under the belt and get a chance to analyze it. It does sound like the, the Vikings aren't going to play a whole lot of starters on defense. So right. how are we going to be able to evaluate the, the quarterbacks with that? We'll get into that a whole lot more as we get through this. But, of course, Greg Smith, good evening, Carl and Luke. Uh, Bobby Robbies, what's up, Broncos country? Jay Roper in the house saying hello. And then uh, Riley Mal Malloy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Or, oh, MHH, MH. Oh, man, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. My uh -oh. bad. Yeah. oh, man. But uh, anyway, and I then saw, we got uh, uh, Riley Malloy. Coming here saying Luke oh, and Carl, really? Luke and Carl, Luke and Carl, get hype. That's what Good. we love. Thank you very much for that super chat to get us started here this evening. And uh, thanks, Riley. Thanks. I needed that. I needed a little bit of boost in my ego after the uh, the tongue lashing I took on Twitter today for simply pointing out the obvious and facts and stats. So I will definitely take that. Uh, that's love there, Riley. Luke, you're a hater coming from my guy, Willie. Absolutely love it. Thank you guys for joining Building the Broncos. I'm Luke. He's Carl. And uh, I wanted to give one shout out before we get into it, Carl. I saw someone in here, and maybe you can find it if I cannot. We got a shout out from Las Vegas, deep in Raiders country, that I got to make sure that we pull up here because uh, that is absolutely crucial. I saw every little aspect of James Palmer's report. First time radio or first time fans have been to the stadium, all that kinds of stuff, man. I don't care. I don't care about any of that. It's time for Broncos football, baby. So I can't find that right now. It's me not being a producer. Uh, so let's start to get into it, guys. It's cool to have a, a huge crowd. We've got 143 people watching uh, just that we can see right now. We got those little thumbs up to 14. Absolutely love it. So, Carl, here we go. First things first, uh, Drew Locke, Teddy Bridgewater, probably the most divisive subject in Broncos country um, outside of politics and religious beliefs. It's that divided right yeah. now. What do you make of the whole di the divide, really? The, the Some of the love, some of the hate, some of the passion, some of the criticism that these two quarterbacks are under? Well, I mean, uh, I, I have to give credit. Bronco fans are always passionate about this team and wanting to see them successful. And, you know, there, obviously there's going to be times where we disagree on what that looks like. I mean, you, you and I don't agree on everything. We, we agree on a lot of things, but there are certain things that we disagree with. And, and like I said, I love that passion. I love that we can have different conversations and, and talk through uh, things and, and come to different conclusions and still say at the end of the day, Hey, we are Bronco fans and uh, that's that's the big thing at the end of this. If whoever wins this job, to, to be there to cheer them on and, and hope for the best for the Broncos this season, because obviously good quarterback play, whoever it is, is good for the Broncos. I mean, that's the only way that you compete with the Chiefs this year. I saw something come out on maybe it was ESPN today where they were listing the, the teams with the best chance to go from last to first. And Broncos, you know, there's eight divisions. Broncos were fifth on that list. Mm. In big part because of the Chiefs being in the division. And, I mean, th that's just a, a pretty tough hill to climb to beat out Mahomes, the best quarterback in football right now. And, I mean, th that gives you a huge leg up. How It doesn't matter how good or bad the rest of your roster is. you got the best quarterback, and you've got the best building block of any team out there. So uh, Broncos have a, a long ways to climb up, but quarterback play being even average gets them – much, much closer than they've been in a long time to trying to compete for this division. Yeah, I completely agree. And, 
here's something I want to add and just make it clear because I think a lot of folks are missing this. And I'm not so sure it's uh, members of Broncos country. I almost feel like those Tebow fans are still lurking around and have slowly converted into Locke fans because they just don't get it. And it's not even a Drew Locke versus Teddy thing. It's let's look at the facts. Teddy Bridgewater was brought here to compete for the starting quarterback job. If he was not brought here, that would have told you that GM George Payton would have been content with Drew Locke and Brett Rippon as at least the one and two. Those those simple optics suggested alone. Now, okay, Luke, optics don't mean everything. That's sp pure speculation. It's not. George Payton has been spitting the same dialect into the microphone since he's gotten here about how quarterback competition is necessary for this Denver Broncos team to rise from the ashes. So as we look at the quarterback competition between Teddy and Drew, it's a lot of the same thing over and over again. It's a very boring style of practice. I think Drew's being asked to do bizarre things that he's not normally asked to do. Uh, these weird little foot dr footwork drills i can't really report based on protocol but he's doing some things that i know pat Shermer's asking him to do that don't seem to make a lot of sense so he might be gaining some brownie points there but on the other hand you look at teddy and he's just doing exactly what he does he's steady teddy and then he goes out there and bombs and has a three interception day so uh, make no mistakes about it this quarterback competition is real and it's drew Locke's job to really win Teddy Bridgewater does not need to do a damn thing to win this job. Period. End of story. Drew Locke, this is it, man. This could be it as the starting quarterback in the NFL, and you got a huge, huge leg up on your competition starting week one in the preseason. Yeah, th that's for sure. And like I said, I, I think this week, I think they won't announce it, but I think this week they will make the decision in the building of who's going to be the starter. And, uh, you know, as much as the training camp practices have, have mattered up to this point, going against another team that doesn't always know every single play that you're going to call for, for a couple days here, going against some, some actual real competition in the sense of, you know, you, these guys want to hit you, you want to hit them. I always think back to the uh, Peyton Manning when uh, they were going against the Houston Texans for training camp. Right. And I can't remember which safety it was that laid out one of the Broncos players. And oh my gosh, Peyton Manning was ticked. And he ended got up getting a. Yeah, got in his face. And then in the game, threw a touchdown against the guy, then got a taunting call. Like probably his only taunting call of his entire career. And so these, these practices, I do think they get really amped up. I think these players really get excited about the opportunity to actually get to hit somebody and not have a coach chew them out for hitting their own teammate, those kind of things. And, and so, yeah, big week for both quarterbacks who can actually go out there and win these practices. Uh, it, it's going to, like I said, I think by Saturday evening, we're going to have a 90% sure chance of who's going to be the starter week one for the Broncos. I'm going to challenge you that on that a little bit, Carl, not because I think you're wrong, but because I don't think this coaching staff is willing to make a decision this early. We could very well see the results. We being you, me, the rest of Broncos country, the NFL, the world, anyone with a functioning brain can know the answer perhaps after week one. That's a possibility. I'm not willing to go there just yet, but we should start to see some separation. Let's say that we do. Vic Fangio has continually teased the fact of possibly drawing this out all the way up until week one. And I don't think that's playing silly little games with the New York Giants because they probably care less who's playing quarterback Drew Locke or Teddy Bridgewater right now. They're just excited to have Saquon Barkley back. That's not good uh, if you're a member of the Broncos. So uh, when, when you start to look at it, man, I just I'm so worried about this coaching staff and the stagnant approach that they've taken with both of these quarterbacks. It's like they're having them do the exact same thing, and both of them are two different quarterbacks. So to expect to see similar results or, you know, tanking or soaring, it's just a bizarre notion. Let Teddy play his game. Let Drew play his game. Yeah, they're a little bit polar opposite, but at the end of the day, these are three- and five-step drops we're talking about here. We're not talking about a Peyton Manning offense. We're talking about Pat Shermer. So I just have such little faith in this coaching staff to make a decision because I hope that they will. I just I don't know that they will, Carl. I'm, I'm worried. Yeah. 
<clears throat> and that might be the case. Like I said, I think most of the building after this week will have a good idea. And I really don't think they'll announce it. It doesn't give them any kind of advantage to announce it. Uh, you know, like, like I said, I don't think the Giants care a whole lot. But I think they still care enough because, like I said, they are pretty opposite quarterbacks. Sure. You know, Bridgewater, he is great throwing outside of the hashes. That That's his money area. Drew Locke, his money area is the middle of the field. So how you compare uh, compare or get ready for each of these quarterbacks is going to be very different for sure. And, you know, maybe we're forgetting about the best quarterback on the Broncos roster. The, the one guy that's already in the Hall of Fame, Kendall Hinton. You know, Jefferson put, pointing that out to us. Brady can't even do that. So there, there's uh, hey, you maybe, know what? Uh, the goat of all quarterbacks, Kendall Hinton. You know what, Jefferson? I absolutely love that because Kendall Hinton is getting run on this team, y'all. And you can check out mahahuddle.com. I think there was an article that was recently published by, by one of us, one of our fine writers over at MHH, uh, talking a little bit about Kendall Hinton. I wrote him up in my Broncos camp journal. This man is getting serious reps at wide receiver. Not only that, He's catching the ball and making some plays. Uh, he's making some second string defensive backs look silly at times. Uh, guys also returning punts, getting a little couple looks at kick returns, stuff like that. I hope we get to see him on yeah. punt return, kick return. I really do. Yeah. And I know that's usually reserved for speedy burners, Deontay Spencer, Pro Bowl returner. Um, I also like Deontay Spencer a lot, by the way. He's having a very good camp. So is Trinity Benson. Believe it or not, they can both have two good camps and both be around the same stature and style of wide receivers. So uh, Kendall Hinton. Do not sleep on him. The Broncos owe him at least one more favor in making yeah. a roster spot in 2021. So, here's what I want to see. Very first play on offense. That you have Kendall Hinton on the field. You have him do an end-around play where you hand it off to him. He's running around the, the edge, and all of a sudden, Cortland Sutton takes off in a streak down the field, and Kendall Hinton throws the first pass of the season for the Denver Broncos for a touchdown. Am I having some like flashbacks to Emmanuel Sanders to was that Emmanuel to Cortland Sutton against the Arizona Cardinals? I think that's the exact play yeah. that you just described where yeah. it was like a now reverse with Kendall Hinton. He deserves yeah, it. And Emmanuel, Emmanuel's <laughs> throwing tutties to Cortland Sutton. I would absolutely love it, man. Kendall Hinton, do not sleep on this man. The Broncos like him. He's a football player. He might not be an elite position, um, but this man will literally do whatever is asked of him. So I absolutely love it. Kendall Hinton, uh, a name to watch. And the Broncos are just so filthy rich when it comes to wide receivers right now. It's going to be tough for him to, you know, make a, a wide receiver slot position on the team so if he yeah. can contribute to special teams then let's get it going uh zebulon what's going on man appreciate you joining building the broncos he's carl i'm luke and we appreciate it man thank you for joining the stream and here comes zebulon coming in hot guys i think the coaches feel the same way as you about teddy but i don't get why why does teddy get a pass for sucking last year but drew Locke doesn't what excuse is okay for teddy but not for drew Locke? Teddy has never been spectacular. I get that he doesn't turn it over. Yay, but he does nothing else either. <laughs> Zebulon, that's a that's a good comment, and I'm going to yep. say it's a good comment because it's full of a lot of truth and a lot of questions that uh, come at the, the heart of the debate <laughs> when it comes to how do you feel about Teddy Bridgewater, Carl? Yeah, so here's the thing. Just to kind of give you a, a behind-the-scenes look at, at coaches and how they feel about players. They love – players that they know the player is going to do exactly what they tell them to do. Like, like coaches, it, it drives them crazy when players decide to do a little bit of improv, unless you absolutely prove yourself like, that it works. Patrick Mahomes, I'm sure for a little while in practices, he was angering Andy Reid, where he was just going, dude, stop running around. Yeah. Once the pads and come on, they can start hitting you. Well, then it still, it, it worked in games. So then they're like, okay, I guess we can allow it. But Drew Locke, the, the problem is he, there's so many times that I'm sure that he's coming to the sideline and the coaches are going, what did you see? You just threw in a triple coverage, dude. What, what was what was your thought process there? We got two guys running underneath that are wide open. And, and here's how Fangio's system works. Or not Fangio, Shermer's system works. He likes to, to really spread teams out. He wants one guy going deep. He wants uh, one guy going into the medium. 
couple guys going into the short and another guy going out into the flat or two guys going out in the flat, one guy in the short, you know, just kind of mix it up a little bit of, of that kind of order. But he always wants at least one going deep, one medium, one short, one out in the flat. And then another one that he chooses where it kind of goes. That, that's what he wants. And, and he wants a quarterback that can read that and say, okay, are they trying to take the deep ball away? Okay, go hit the medium. And, and there's just times where Drew Locke, he wants to be the hero. And he just goes, oh, I see that deep guy. He's going down the field. Let me try to hit him. Oh, he's in triple coverage. And it drives coaches crazy. Now, sometimes he hits that, and it's great, and he is the hero. But like I said, coaches love when they have a player that, that does exactly what they ask of them, and, and sometimes that means it's boring. And Teddy Bridgewater, that is, <laughs> that is a great word to describe him. He is boring, but he gets the ball in the place that it needs to be. And his teammates respect him and like him. Listen, he's a veteran quarterback, and his. I'm not. I'm not going to say like. I'm going to correct that. His teammates love him. Uh, anywhere he's he goes, you don't hear a bad word about Teddy Bridgewater. Even from his coaching staff, who he shredded to bits with Matt Rule and the Carolina Panthers. They I, I checked in with them. They absolutely love Teddy Bridgewater and uh, felt like he was handcuffed at times to the system last year. So, uh, what does Teddy Bridgewater bring? consistency immediately to the table uh he brings a level of football acumen that drew lock has not proven that he possesses just yet something that vic fangio and george payton have talked great lengths about it's one thing to learn it in the classroom and process it in the classroom something i believe drew has done this last off season and is doing right now that's great how well can you transition it onto the field that's what ultimately makes the difference not only between quarterbacks but all other players on the field and regardless of their position can you learn this game can you watch film can you take your analytics your coaching all the resources that teams give you and put out a different result that is going to help your team win football games drew lock hasn't shown that the fact of the matter is he's had two excellent games in two years that's it the Houston Texans game is rookie year and the Carolina Panthers game last year. And those were two very good games. I'm not going to knock them at all, but I know the Chargers game, right? Everybody, he can't, he let it come back to the Chargers. Let's pump the brakes just a minute. You got Bosa and Ingram both out. Uh, the Chargers do what the Chargers do and they collapse. Two games out of 18 the last two years is not enough. For Vic Fangio, whose job is on the line to go with Drew Locke as his starting quarterback. Hell, Vic Fangio is so disconnected from the offense, the general manager had to come in here and bring in another quarterback. That's where we're at. Those yeah. aren't the op optics. That's not a narrative. That's the fact. And I'm tired of hearing anything else other than that. There's no narrative. There's no spin here. It is what it is. These quarterbacks, they both might be lame ducks, but we don't know which one's going to start, Carl. And that's yeah. just ridiculous. Yep. And and talking about which one starts, we got Corey H coming in here with the $5 super chat. Appreciate that. Uh, he says, when I heard he was starting, talking about Drew Locke, I thought it meant something. But when they, they said Teddy is starting game two, then I realized it meant nothing. And, and that's that's the that's the reality of the situation. We're, we're still at that 50-50 quarterback battle going on. You know, both these guys were, uh, you know, it was kind of like this last week. Teddy Bridgewater had five pretty consistent practices where he was right there either winning the practice or, you know, they were debating back and forth of, of which one or it's a tie kind of thing. That's That's Teddy. That's what he does. He consistently every single day pretty much brings the same thing. He'll have a bad day every once in a while. But mm -hmm. brings that consistency, and then Drew Lock, he goes out there at the uh, the scrimmage practice, where they had it inside the building because the air quality was so bad, and he goes out there and has a a, a good start to that practice, and everybody's going okay. He had that seventy yard bomb to Cortland Sutton, and another big play later on, and another one, and they're going okay. That's what he can be, and and like you said, he's had two excellent games where we've seen what he could be. Th that's never been the question. <laughs> Drew Locke has all the potential to be a top 10 quarterback in football. He's got the arm. He's got the athleticism. He's got, you know, the confidence, all those kind of things that you're looking for. But there's other pieces that are still missing. And that consistency is the big thing that separates him from being a top 10 quarterback and a bottom third quarterback. 
Corey, I absolutely love the support. I absolutely love the comment. There's a lot of truth there, and I appreciate that because Carl and I were joking about that before the show started. We're like, oh, Drew's starting. We're talking a little bit about the death chart, you know, what it means, what it doesn't mean, because it really doesn't mean much right now. Um, but real quick, head coach Vic Fangio did have a press conference today, and he was asked, you know, about his decision to start quarterback Drew Locke, and he said, quote, the same reason that we gave him the first team snap of the first practice. No big deal, end quote. So there's Vic, disconnected from the offense, but also not giving you much, and also giving you the same answer he previously gave as to which quarterback would take the first team rep in uh, training camp. He said it was going to be Drew Locke because he was the starter last year. You know, so it's just time. That's all. You know, it doesn't mean anything. Drew's going to uh, have his fair shake. Teddy's going to have his fair shake. I think the story is really going to be about Teddy Bridgewater this week. I really do. He's beloved in Minnesota. I said it last Saturday. Um, I think that's going to add another element of pressure to Drew Locke's game, and I'm really curious to see how he responds. Uh, Drew, you're heading into enemy territory where they love your – your quarterback, your teammate, they love Teddy too. So it's kind of a bizarre set of circumstances, but to Drew's credit, Drew has done a lot of growing up this off season. And I have always appreciated his humility talking about how he got a little bit more grown man strength, right? Poking fun of himself a little bit for growing some whiskers on his head, on his, <laughs> on his chinny chin chin. And he's always such a personable, good young man. And I've always appreciated the fact that he could poke fun of himself, but uh, you know, I want to see when is that potential going to turn into production and right. I wish we were at practice, Carl, because I feel like you can get so much more out of these practices than you can the preseason game because I don't need to see special teams. I don't. I really don't. I, you know, back in the day, players used to say that they practice special teams before practice or the games and all that kind of stuff. And it's like, can we go back to that, please? I know the Broncos need to improve, but gosh, dang it. I just want to see this team get better. Yeah, I, I did have a question for you. Let's hit it. Uh, and, and you were you kind of maybe answered it a little bit there, but I guess with this being in Minnesota, does this give more of an advantage to Teddy Bridgewater or to to Drew Locke? In the sense, let, let me let me add some prefaces into this. Like okay. Mike Zimmer knows Teddy Bridgewater. He knows his preferences, he knows where he likes to go, what makes him struggle, all those kind of things. But also that means Teddy Bridgewater knows Mike Zimmer's defense because he's practiced against it daily probably no other defense he's practiced against more or played against more than a mike zimmer defense add in the pressure of going home but also like knowing the facilities all those kind of things just that there's a lot of things that go back and forth for for one advantage for the other disadvantage for the other which one do you think actually has the real advantage this week Teddy, knowing the defense, I think has the biggest advantage. And I would say Drew not knowing the defense, you know, that's Teddy's biggest advantage. It's uh, this comes with being a veteran quarterback. And to all of you who smashed me on Twitter today saying Teddy's absolute garbage, you're wrong. You're flat wrong. Otherwise, this man would not be in the league. He's, you know, I get it. He's on his fourth team. He's probably headed to his fifth. And he's a journeyman, journeyman quarterback. But I don't see the life of a journeyman quarterback as a failure. I refuse to see that as a failure. I do, do not look at Ryan Fitzpatrick as a failure. I've never looked at guys like Jeff Garcia as failures. Heck, even Rich Gannon, right, who w was hugely pumped up coming into the NFL, flailed for a little bit, and then ultimately came out on top. So journeyman quarterbacks have a place in this league. Otherwise, you just have the stars, the starters, and then guys who can't do anything. And uh, there needs to be value to that. And it doesn't need to be this all or nothing thing. So I think yeah. Teddy probably has that slight little bit of uh, advantage in knowing football a little bit more than Drew, knowing the NFL a little bit more than Drew. And no, I'm not calling Drew dumb. I'm not saying he, he doesn't know football. I'm saying that Teddy just knows more because he's older and, and he's been around. And look, Carl, the guy had his freaking legs snapped in half in those on those build in those buildings. He knows that facility. He he knows everything. He doesn't need yeah. to do anything. It's all on Drew, man. Like Drew, the plane lands you better start playing because this team isn't going to wait for you to warm up. And you better know this. The Minnesota Vikings defense knows a little bit about Drew Locke also. I know he didn't play. It was uh, – who was the quarterback that day? Brandon Allen. 
when when the Broncos played the Vikings a couple of years ago. But the tape is out on Drew Locke drifting to the right, looking to throw across his body, middle of the field. Yeah. Uh, and some of those tendencies and stuff like that is there. So if Drew can come out and show that he's no longer that quarterback – that will allow him to separate, and that would get me excited and should get Broncos country fired up. And for the love of God, it would allow coaches to make a decision so we can move forward in 2021. Yep. All right, we have in the shop Willie coming in here saying, Vic's seat isn't as hot as you're acting. Why not? What are you talking about? The guy hasn't won a game in the month of September. George Payton is here, and he is a scout of scouts. You think he doesn't want his head coach connected to both the offense, defense, and special teams? We've talked about the clock management issues at nauseum. We've talked about Vic Fangio's leadership, or lack thereof, when it comes to the whole team aspect. Uh, I just, man, you know, I like Vic Fangio. I really do, but I can't help but feel that the inevitable is eventually coming and I never want to call for a man's job. He will get a job as a defensive coordinator so fast, Willie, your head will spin. So don't worry about Vic. He's going to be okay. Uh, yeah. It's just trying to figure out this head coaching job. And it comes down to this guys when and gals, when we want to be real, real cut and dry about it, the Broncos are missing three things. They're missing an owner. They're missing a head coach and they're missing a franchise quarterback without those three things. There's no playoffs. Yeah, that's that's the very foundation of your organization. If you got those three things, pretty much every single year, you can about guarantee you're going to be in the playoffs. I mean, you look at all the top teams in, in football right now. They have all those things that maybe one team out there kind of gets in there every year. But the consistency year in, year out, they've got a good owner. They've got a, a great coach. And like I said, they've got a great quarterback. Look and, at the, uh, and look at the Seahawks right now. I think they're a perfect example. I just read an article today talking about, or or it was rather one of those little memes. I think it was Max Kel Kelberman going off about Russell Wilson wasting his his prime years. You know, and that caught my interest. But that's a perfect example. Look at the Seattle Seahawks, always in contention. The San Francisco 49ers, they have completely change the script on that organization with John Lynch. Congratulations, by the way. And Carl, we would be remiss if we did not just say what a Hall of Fame weekend for yep. Broncos country. We were on air uh, during the second night of the, the ceremony, but holy cow, man, got to be feeling good if you're a member of Broncos country. Yeah, seeing three guys go into the Hall of Fame on the same weekend and, and three, like, just not only like great players, but great guys as well. It just was, uh, it was a legendary weekend. A lot of tears watching those guys give their speeches because just thinking back through all the memories that they were able to give me, you know, I, I'm one of those fortunate. Uh, I know some of our listeners are a little bit younger, some of them older. Uh, I've gotten to see all three guys play for the Broncos and play well. And, and just, you know, I, I keep telling myself as I get older, make sure you appreciate when you see greatness on the field. You know, make sure you guys are appreciating Von Miller this year. Because it might be his last year as a Denver Bronco. It, it really might. Uh, so make sure you guys go out there and really appreciate everything that you see out there. You know, th th there's a lot of players that just that that's the the fitting. When Peyton Manning was signed, 2012, right when he was signed, I told myself, Carl, make sure you appreciate this time because it might be a year. It might be five years that he's here. But make sure you appreciate that you have Peyton Manning playing for your team. And uh, man, what a ride that was. And so, you know, I, I got to see Super Bowl 32 and 33 and I loved them, but I, I don't think I really appreciated them. Me too. I started reaching that point. That I'm like, man, winning Super Bowls is easy. Like, right? We just got two in a row. Let's go for a three. And then all of a sudden it's like a 20 year drought of winning Super Bowls. And then all of a sudden Peyton comes and I, that Super Bowl 50, like it was, I was in a Chiefs fan's house watching it. Oh, and uh, nice. like he left the room. I think, I don't know if he was crying. I'm not going to, I'm not going to assume, I guess he was that, but He's he crying. was pretty, he was pretty mad. And I just, I just sat there in my chair and I just had my hands up and I just closed my eyes and just, I'm like, remember this moment. Cause you're going to share this with your kids. And uh, yeah, yes. it's, it's life changing, Carl. Like, I don't mean to like be that guy that's making football life. Cause there's so much right. more to life, right. than, but it like, 
it reinvigorated us come us being broncos country our town our our geographical location oh like everything man like the orange was brighter all over the world when peyton yep. man came i mean like there was just this renewed optimism and you're right man we get spoiled and sometimes that being spoiled it's it's tough <laughs> i mean you want to definitely appreciate those things like you said but uh man here we are wandering not only the head coaching desert the quarterback desert but now ownership desert we don't yep. know what that's gonna look like so right we I'm, just gotta hoping... take it day, day, day by day right now i mean yeah. it's it's we got to take it practice by practice with these guys and then look at it as a whole and figure it out there's lots of different competitions also right tackle edge um backups all kinds of stuff going on so yeah uh day uh, to day I was going to mention, I mean, they, they put out the unofficial depth chart today is what they mm. call it. And right tackle is the other position where they had two starters listed, Bobby Massey. And uh, of course the, our, our other boy there and Mr. Um, Cal Calvin Anderson. Yeah. Calvin Anderson. Mr. You know, Anderson. Yeah. And uh, so that'll be a fun one to keep track of, but we were talking about coaches and Naj uh, Altoff coming in here with the 1999 super chat. Really appreciate that. Asking about, Coach Thank Fangio you know. says, hey, brothers, since becoming Coach Fangio, I feel we uh, he has lacked interest in the offense and special teams to the detriment of the team. Who do you feel be most relied upon to decide the starter, Peyton, Shermer, or Fangio? Let's take the first part of that. Of the, uh, you know, honestly. That's a great question. I, I do Naj. think. I love it. Thank you so much. I love yeah. it. Absolutely. Love. You guys are coming in so hot on a Tuesday night. Is this, <laughs> this is what y'all do on Tuesday nights? You're in this yeah. hot? I mean, this is this is awesome. You guys are absolutely killing it. Thank you, Naj. Yeah. But, uh, but no, I, I do think you're right that there is sometimes a, not really a, a lack of interest, but he's so focused on making the defense great because that's what he's known for. And, and honestly, in some ways, that's what he was brought in for too. I, I think they... The plan was Fangio go run the defense, run some of the, you know, timeouts and all that kind of stuff. He's going to make this defense great because that's what won us the Super Bowl back there in 2015. And then hopefully get an offensive coordinator that comes in, develops a young quarterback and just really turns that offense into something. You know, you want your defensive guy that's that's one of the best defensive coordinators in football to go do well with that defense. Like if he can't do well with the defense, then what what the heck is he doing here? But at the same time, there has to be that balance. And I think this is always that hard part for coaches to figure out. I remember with Mike Shanahan, the day that he got that becoming GM and head coach, like I, I just remember telling myself, man, that is too much responsibility for one person. And, and I think it's too much power for one person at the same time. You know, it, there's very few times that we get to see that actually work out for a team. Now, who gets to, to name the starter? I, I think Peyton's going to put it in Fangio's hands. He's going to say, hey, your job's on the line. You better pick the guy you think's actually going to keep your job. Yeah, and that's the thing I, I love about George Peyton. Um, I'm just a sucker for scouts, Carl. That's and you, and you scout, I scout. Mm -hmm. you know, love hitting the road, love watching film. I just love it. Absolutely love it. I think scouting, the, the life of a scout, a professional scout, um, has got to be one of the most miserable experiences I think known to mankind because those guys and gals are away from their family and absolutely grinding. That being said, they trust each other. They trust their evaluations. They trust their coaches. That's why George Payton is going to empower Vic Fangio and has empowered Vic Fangio um, to run this team. That being said, I feel the same way Naj does. I think Vic Fangio is so disconnected that the reason he brought Pat Shermer here was to say, here you go. I don't have to worry about this now. Um, my defense is going to be so damn good. Hopefully we can get by. And that has not worked one bit. Coach Fangio has struggled with clock management issues, and there's still not going to be an advanced analytics or time person, time management person that's designated for 2021, something I see as a complete farce and mistake. Um I mean, we're heading into year three here and we're going to be making the same mistakes. So if I'm going to be busting Drew Locke's chops, you're damn right. I'm going to be busting Coach Fangio's chops. And yep. uh, when it comes down to who's going to make the call, I think it's going to be Pat Shermer. But another voice that will be heavily leaned on and listened to will be Mike Munchak. 
I get it. He's a Hall of Fame offensive lineman. Uh, he's a hell of an offensive line coach. Just ask any place he's been to. Ask Garrett Bowles in that $68 million contract extension. Uh, I think Mike Munchak knows football. He can gauge the temperature of the team in the room. And I think his voice is respected and it's heard. And sometimes it makes me wonder a little bit if some decisions are being, you know, at least uh, vocalized to Mike Munchak and Pat Shermer. And I'm sure Pat Shermer leans on Mike Munchak a lot. I don't think Mike Munchak has interest in being a head coach. Um, I think that he's comfortable with where he's at. So it's an interesting question. Who's going to ultimately pick the quarterback? I would hope for the love of God that it's Vic Fangio because uh, it's it's his job to definitely lose here in the yeah. month of September because if they start off slow and don't win in September, I don't think Vic makes it. I really don't. I could see it going to Pat Shermer, the interim duties, and away we go. Yeah. Well, we have in the shop Willie kind of adding to his comment earlier with the two dollar super. He says Vic helped cool. get Peyton. They love each other. I, I don't this I don't disagree that they they like each other. I mean, I, I don't think George Peyton comes here if he doesn't like the coaching staff. I mean, he turned down a lot of jobs over the years where he could have been GM. He waited for the job that he thought it would be the the best for him. Exactly. But this this reminds me of when Pat Bolin had to fire his friend Mike Shanahan. You know, in football, unfortunately, winning is everything. And if you're not going out there winning, there are times you have to say bye to a friend. And mm. and this is the part of the job that I, I can't imagine being a part of, of, of just having to fire actual friends. You know, that's why I love the job that I have. I don't have to worry about firing anyone. I'm the only person that works where I work. So, <laughs> uh, so it's not bad. I, I can't fire myself. Um, I mean, there's people that could fire me, but uh, I can't fire other people. Sure. And, uh, you know, so I, I can't imagine that of having to go to a friend and just say, hey, I'm sorry, you're not getting it done. Well, and, and why, do, why don't you think John Elway and Gary Kubiak are on speaking terms? I mean, like, you can look no further than right there. I mean, those guys had a falling out over loyalty. Uh, yeah. Gary Kubiak, just like John, very loyal to his guys. And when he wanted a certain amount of coaches here and John didn't, and they had a huge falling out. And that's why you see Gary Kubiak with Minnesota, which, by the way, isn't being talked about enough. Uh, Clint Kubiak up there, right? Clint, mm -hmm. Clint's got, Clint's getting, he's grown folk now, man. Yeah. I can't, I remember when Clint was a linebacker, right? At CSU. And uh, it, it's just absolutely crazy. Now Clint is kind of filling in for his dad there. It's cool to see that progression. Um, it's just a interesting week coming out off of Hall of Fame week, you know, yep. into the Vikings that have had a lot of Bronco influence over the recent years. And the Broncos and the Vikings have an interesting uh, history over the years. It could have been the Broncos and the Vikings in the Super Bowl. Uh, I know something that the Broncos have continually talked about at nauseum uh, in the late 90s there. They thought it was definitely going to be Minnesota. And uh, absolutely yeah. crazy the way the world comes to full into full circle. But Thank you guys so much for joining Building the Broncos. He's Carl. I'm Luke. We're kind of heading into our final segment of the night, and let's keep it rolling as Broncos country is in full force here on Building the Broncos. Brandon coming in with a $5 super. Appreciate you, Brandon. Thank you for your support, and go Broncos. Bama Broncos. Teddy and Locke will have to fall on their faces for this team to lose. This team is way too loaded for failure. Brandon, I absolutely love it. You know why? Because you got Bama Broncos on this team. Just to name a few. Let's go through it. We got Kareem Jackson, Jerry Judy, mm -hmm. Pat Sertan. Am I missing anybody? I'm sure there might be one in there on the practice squad. Probably. And uh, I'm sure they're a beast because you start to look at these SEC players and what they are doing in the NFL, what they have done in the NFL, especially uh, in the last 20 years has been nothing short of amazing. But Brandon brings up a great point, a point that the national audience, um, any anywhere from ESPN, to NFL Network, Fox, they're all saying the Denver Broncos are elite in defensive backs. They are elite in talent. They are elite in wide receiver core. They have one of the best offensive lines. Um, all this talent, is it for nothing if you don't have a quarterback? Or can we struggle with both Drew and Teddy to get through the 2021 season? Well, I mean, we, we've seen other teams that 
found success and didn't have great quarterbacks even recently. I mean, the, the 2015 team, I mean, as much as I love Peyton, he wasn't great that year. Brock Osweiler, I know a lot of people were going to sign this guy to a long-term contract. I'm like, his play does not – like, just just look at him as an individual. Don't look at the overall record. <laughs> Don't look at the fact that the team is winning. I said, He's look at him right. as an individual player. And it, it was not always pretty. They, they pretty much just said, please just don't go lose a game for us. And he almost lost that last game against the Chargers where they finally had to put in Peyton because he won. He missed a – and this thing, I know some people are like, the turnovers weren't all his fault. But one of the biggest ones was his fumble. And people are going, well, fumbles happen. He missed a corner blitz. That's on the quarterback. You have to recognize when they are going to that kind of setup on defense, that, that's completely on him. Um, and, and he got pulled yep. and the, the rest is history, obviously with how that worked out. But, uh, uh, yeah, so it, it, it's, this team can find success, even if the quarterbacks are not great, but they're going to have to have incredible health on both sides of the ball. They're going to have to have some bounces really go their way. This defense is not going to be able to drop interceptions or they're going to have to have a great fumble recovery percentage. <laughs> When, when the fumbles bounce their way kind of thing. Um, and, and you're just going to have to have so many things go right when the quarterback is not great. You look at the Bears in 2018, you know, they pretty much just told their quarterback, don't go lose us games. We got a great defense. But even there, like they got to the playoffs and it still wasn't quite enough. You know, you needed your quarterback. The, the defense did great in that playoff game. But the offense couldn't muster hardly anything for that for that game. So, uh, you know, the Jaguars was it 2017, where they uh, had that great defense and they had the Patriots on lost. the ropes. I know it gave it away, and the quarterback just couldn't quite get them over the top. Blake so, Bortles, right? And then, and then they went and paid Blake Bortles all that money after uh-huh. that, that loss. Yeah. Former Broncos so, quarterback, by the way, right? Right, right. And so that's that's again where you have to you have to really be able to isolate players away from the the full picture of the team my boy the, yeah 2000 ravens that's another great example they had a great running game great defense and and had a lot of things go their way that season so but it has not worked jay i love you carl i love you guys to death you're the best ever but it has not worked the band-aid approach has oh, not agree. worked you yeah. know and like it's freak situations where you know, you got PFM who's the brain on the field who can still manipulate everything. And even when he's not playing well, I mean, lightning does not strike twice in the bottle unless Aaron Rodgers was coming here. Some freaky, you know, circumstance where Russell Wilson lands here. Another great quarterback lands here. It ain't happening, folks. And um, one last thing that just drives me crazy is the whole debate about Drew's ceiling. Well, Drew has a higher ceiling. Drew has more potential. The higher ceiling, the higher ceiling, the higher ceiling. What good is a ceiling when the floor is blown out? Because that's kind of what I see with Drew Locke when you look at two games in two years that were absolutely killer, absolutely phenomenal. If I, what, what do I want to see out of Drew Locke? It's not the bomb plays, the touch, touchdowns to Jerry Judy and Cortland Sutton. I don't need to see that in Minnesota. I already know he can do it. I want to see him show, show me. The short to medium routes, how accurate can you be? How fast can you get rid of the football? Average, what, 2.3 seconds in the league to get rid of it, and he's sitting at 4.1? Clean that up. Uh, yep. Show me the play fakes that worked with Rich Scangarello. Show me what you can do. Show me some of the new stuff. Don't just throw me the bombs. I know you can do the bombs. Everybody can. Everyone in the league's got a strong arm, okay? Ben's like Ben Roethlisberger's 100 years old. And he could still throw a bomb to chase Claypool. Those are just the facts. So, Drew, show me, man. Show us. Lead this team. And that's another aspect of the quarterback competition that uh, I, I think is just not talked about enough. Which quarterback is going to lead to this team? Because it's not always by performance. Sometimes it's by uh, body language. Sometimes it's by mentality. Teddy's right. probably psyched to be heading into Minnesota. Is Drew as psyched? 
he doesn't, you know, doesn't really have anything to prove against Minnesota, and neither does Teddy. But I feel like there's more reason to be excited if you're Teddy than Drew. And I hope I'm wrong. But this is Drew's chance, Carl. And I just I would hate to see him squander it away because right. A, Pat Shermer's wasting him, or B, he just can't do it. Right. Well, and, and I always think back to that that 2015 season. Like I said, Peyton Manning wasn't great, but don't tell me we don't win that Super Bowl without Peyton Manning. You know, it, it's uh, right. It, sure. His his leadership, his bar that he set for himself and for the entire organization when he got to the playoffs, his ability to to be that veteran that keeps everybody calm and focused where they need to be like all of that played into the picture. Even if Peyton is not doing great on the field, that was always a, a part of it. And uh, well, and to your point right there, Carl, it, it, you just made me think of something. I've just been bashing Vic Fangio for not being involved in the offense. What does Teddy Bridgewater do? He has a little bit idea about time management and how to use timeouts. He knows situational football. Maybe he helps Pat Shermer and Vic Fangio a little bit more just by being that game manager. I think you're exactly right. And uh, Dave Glassman, he doesn't think I'm right. And that's cool because it's awesome to disagree. I appreciate your feedback. Uh, Hey Luke, how do you like your crow? Medium, medium well, or with hot sauce? I, I've in the shop, Willie. I've told you a million times over. It would be the best case scenario yeah. for the Broncos and Drew Lock to work out. Uh, I wanted him in the first round. Um, I've called him a bust, not a bust, but I've called him bad at football because I haven't seen enough to say he's good at football. He has all of the talent. I've been very critical of him, but I've also praised him when, when need be. I've had him with some wins out there in my training camp journals. I've shown and written a little bit about where he's improved his game, but it's just it's these guys are in such a tough spot because I don't feel like the quarterbacks are doing them any favors. Um, I just feel lost. I feel a little lost. Yeah. I'm excited. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm excited, but – this practice, let's just next two days be healthy and not get in fights, please. <laughs> like, yeah, like it's I saw, please. <laughs> I saw today the Giants had 20 players set out practice because of injuries. 20 players, 20 players had to sit out practice. No. Wow. And they're, they're the Broncos week one opponent. So just keep that in mind if those injuries linger a little bit longer than some think. All right, we got Keith Brugman coming in here. I like that last name. My, my wife's last name is close to that. Uh, oh, cool. He says, now, l- let me preface this. Realistic situations that actually happen this offseason. So Aaron Rodgers, Watkins, Russell Wilson, all those guys, not a possibility. Not the okay. draft. E- not the draft either, right? Like, you wanna throw out, do you want to throw out the draft? Let's throw out the draft because I'm not – you know what? I mean, Justin, Justin Fields, Fields listen, if y'all love Justin Fields so damn much, then go buy a Chicago Bears jersey and root him on. Other than that, I don't want to hear it because – PS2 and Justin Fields, they're two different completely positions. It's not fair to critique the players. If you want to critique the GM and the GM's decision, then go for it. But yeah. the player thing, that really rubs me the wrong way and that pisses me off. So, yeah, man, let's let's throw out let's throw out the 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 draft, right? Okay. Let's look at yeah. free agents. I, let's look at free agents or trades, right? And I'm right. not going to include Aaron Rodgers or Russ Wilson or anything like that. Well, we know they were in on the Matthew Stafford trade. So mm-hmm. that suggests that they were definitely looking for quarterbacks and picking up the phone. Um, it also tells me that they were looking at more of those tier two quarterbacks, or as we like to call them, retreads when we write and do our podcasts. Um, I actually wrote a little bit about Jacoby Brissett, you know, and, and as him as a possible option. A lot of people wondered about Andy Dalton. Uh, you had some folks writing about Mitchell Trubisky. What would have been my ideal solution? Um, looking back, hindsight being 2020, I really would have liked Ryan Fitzpatrick probably on this team. I think that uh, he provides a level of veteran mentorship that just is a little bit above Teddy Bridgewater, um, just with experience. And the proof is in the pudding there. Uh, he's no stranger to playing second fiddle. And I'd have been curious to see what maybe a Fitz Magic and a Drew Locke uh, combination would have looked like. But it's it's tough because either way you still gotta figure out this year this is it for Drew Locke so uh, a veteran quarterback for me would have been the best option if Teddy wasn't here obviously so I'm going Fitz Magic okay I mean that that one makes sense you don't have to give up any draft capital to make that one happen like you would have with the Matthew Stafford even though he said no. <laughs> 
right? He's like, isn't that what he said to you? I think Nick, it was Nick and I, or maybe it was you and I, we were doing a podcast on Saturday night and we're all like Fitzpatrick to the Broncos. And then I think he had threatened to retire or like show like he was not interested. And that's yeah. like, Oh, ouch. <laughs> yeah. I, so, so here's, here's my thought. Uh, I've always been a, a go big or go home kind of guy. And I, especially when it comes to the quarterback position, I mean, you, you look at the Broncos Super Bowls that they've gotten, they've taken some big risks in those years where they went and took some chances on players that maybe others were not willing to like a, a keep to leave. Right. I mean, Patriots didn't want him back. They're just like, dude, your attitude, get out of here. DeMarcus Ware, injury ridden. Peyton Manning coming off his neck injury and couldn't T even throw 10 yards when they signed him. Yeah. TJ Ward. We don't, yeah. we don't want to pay you later. Yeah. Um, so, you know, Emmanuel Sanders, another guy injury prone, kind of a, a little bit of a weird attitude, all those kind of things. Broncos took a chance, went out there and got that guy and, and obviously paid off big time for him. Uh, and, and so sometimes I'm willing to take some, some big risks to see what happens. You know, if it fails, Hey, at least I went down swinging. I don't want to just watch that ball just go through and you're like, oh, yeah. Are you going where I think you're going, Carl? Because this is like the tease of all teases here. I'm starting to I'm starting to get anxious. Okay. I would have gone Matthew Stafford. Okay. I really would have. I, I would have right. made that trade. I, I don't know if I would have gone two first-round picks like they did because I'm going, hey, I've got the number nine overall pick here. Uh, and, and plus, you know, they, they kind of did the whole take on some contract and all that kind of stuff. Uh, on top of that, where they ended up getting extra, I, I would have said, "Hey, number nine overall, I'll throw in a third round pick, and you know, if there's maybe a, a young player that you like on our team, not any of the stars, I'm talking second tier level kind of players, that maybe we can throw your direction, and then we'll we'll go from there." And uh, I know they tried, Carl. They're too, it's too rich. You know, sometimes you got to overpay a little bit, course, and you yeah, you, you overpay is. for quality. I uh, man. I like Stafford. I just, but you're right. You know what? That's a very fair statement. You overpay for quality. That's not only fair, that's true. Think about it. If you go out and you buy a $1 burrito, it's probably not going to be good later, right? Yeah. Uh, go out and spend, you know, 25 bucks on a decent meal with the family one night. You're probably doing okay. So yeah. I, I think that's really interesting. Um, I thought maybe you were going to go with a more controversial quarterback down south before all those legal issues came up because we were talking about some of those character concerns. But um, now yeah. I, I hear I hear you, man. There were so many options, but ultimately, like uh, at least we don't have Andy Dalton out there in a visor, right? <laughs> like how ridiculous yep. is that? I mean, maybe he thinks that'll help him if the defense, you know, aren't reading his eyes. Something that's happened since TCU. But I digress, guys. It's seven o'clock here, Mountain Time. We're gonna put a big red bow on this thing as we start to finish the show but before we do andrew andrew morrow coming in with a 99 cent super a super sticker appreciate you so much andrew and go broncos hopefully you guys are having a great end of your summer it's crazy kids are going back to school uh football is officially back it's starting to become that time of year carl and i cannot wait yeah i'm, I'm with you man it's starting to maybe think about cooling off here in the near future get a little bit you know us us big boys we like it a little cooler hell yeah uh, this 100 degree weather sometimes gets to us but uh obviously and then that means football weather's back that that's always a nice thing as well and so very excited for that you know my daughter i think goes back to school here in like a week man mine just went back yesterday okay and then she starts flag football coming up here soon and man it is just absolutely crazy i cannot believe that time has just gone by like this and yeah. when we start talking about time that is something i want to continually express my appreciation and support for all of you guys with mhh that rock with carl and i tonight um and rock with us on a daily basis where you can find all of our work at milehighhuddle.com or on twitter at mile high huddle your time is the, is the biggest form of support that you can donate to these shows something that we absolutely love and it's the biggest gift that we have carl on this earth so i'll preach until i am in the ground and uh just to have 230 eyes on us right now is just very humbling and uh i appreciate the support and carl i appreciate the opportunity to to fill in man it's been a little bit since i've been on a tuesday so thanks for uh thanks for having me yeah definitely man it, it's been uh, been an honor to i mean we've done 
what now the last three shows pretty much together. So we're rolling. Uh, I, I saw somebody ask earlier, did I fire Nick? I got to uh, get you a hat. I got to get yeah. you an MI, maybe Nick's hat, like somehow take it from him or, you know, like a keep to leave, snatch that. It's my chain punk. It's my yeah. hat punk, but no guys. Hey, Nick Kendall. Um, he's just wrapping up some, some good summer stuff in the summer months and the off season months and, uh, things of that nature. We work very bizarre schedules guys, uh, to say the least, <laughs> very bizarre hours. We've got guys and gals working overseas for us at mile high huddle too. So whenever we can get that off time, off time, uh, to be with our friends and family, it's very, very important. So we always encourage Nick and, uh, know that you guys, you guys know. Nick is coming back. Nick would not yeah. leave uh, without this quarterback conundrum. Nick would not leave without a Justin Fields comment before the quarterback competition <laughs> is decided. Nick would not leave because Iowa football is coming back. So yeah. uh, y'all just hang in I, there. But we've got a we've got a few more supers to get to. I know, yeah. Out here. And uh, I did want to say I, I don't know if Nick has got the chance to see, but Iowa State is ranked above his Iowa Hawkeyes <laughs> in, in the that, college Nick. preseason. So. Uh, we'll, we'll see how that one plays out. We've got Stu Meat coming in here with the super sticker, 90, 99 hey, one. Stu, really appreciate that, Stu. I like and, that picture uh, there. It looks like Stu's got a, a little member of Broncos country and a Bronco hat. And that's, that's the coolest thing ever, yeah. man. When I'm out there at Broncos camp, I, I try to talk to as many fans as I can. And I'm always just so a little jealous and a little in awe of those kids there with their mom or dad or uncle or grandpa or grandma or because I remember that. And that was such a yep. joyful time in my life. And uh, I try to replicate that as a parent, but shout out for sure. Thank you so yeah. much. No, I, I talked my wife in la into it last night. I'm going to get a couple Broncos jerseys for my boys. Yeah. And, uh, we're going to find And my, my I, I'm going to get a Justin Simmons. Of course you got to go, Justin. Yeah, you know, hey. he just got his big contract. I like guys that I know are going to be around for a while. Well, you and he's and he's and he's a good guy. Like he, he was he he signed my daughter's hat a couple of years ago when he totally didn't have to before I started working and all this. So I'm I'm in favor for sure. Yeah. And then you know what? I, I'm going to take a risk on a rookie. I'm going to go Patrick Sertan. Yeah, I like that. I like is. that number two. It looks good. I think he's a good guy. I think he's a hard worker. I think he's going to be a great player for the Broncos moving forward. Even if I disagreed with the pick, I still like the player, and I still think he's going to be a great Bronco. So uh, th I think that's the direction I'm going to go. Number two and number 31 for the boys. And my wife, she goes, you know what? I know we said we're not going to be watching TV while we're down there because, you know, trying to get to know the boys, all those things. And she's like, Sundays, we're going to be watching football. So, <laughs> yeah, very exciting times. This but I uh, right. came in with the clutch. I absolutely yeah. love it. Speaking of clutch, Thomas Hall coming in here. Is this our Tom Hall? Is this our Tom Hall from uh, from Emma? Tom? You better, Tom, you better let your presence be known because I see you on the Huddle Up Pod. And if you're not coming on this pod, we're going to be a little jealous. What's up, Tom? I uh, appreciate the support so much. You guys are absolutely killing it. And no, that's that's great, man. I'm, I'm super pumped to hear that, Carl. And, uh, I love it. Absolutely love it. Steve, finish us, finish us off, buddy. $5 super. Appreciate it. If Aaron Rodgers has a down year, but top 10 in both current QBs bomb, are the Broncos still in? You're damn right they're still in, just like they're probably still in on a Russell Wilson conversation. Heck, even a Deshaun Watson conversation. Just pure speculating. But when we look a year down the road, we don't know um, – how upset Russell Wilson will be if everything will still be butterflies and rainbows in Seattle. We don't know what the damage is going to look like in Green Bay. I can't wait yeah. to see what that looks like. And then you never know which other disgruntled quarterback is going to come out of the woodwork. Uh, it's just always changing. Yeah. Well, and I, I look at what, what has Minnesota done? What, because, I mean, that, that's where we're talking about our boy coming from. Pay, and, quarter, pay quarterbacks out the wazoo and draft uh -huh. running backs that are amazing. <laughs> pretty, pretty much. <laughs> but, I mean, they, they like the veteran direction. Got Case yeah. Keenum. They brought him in as a, as a backup, and they even traded a, a first-round pick to go get Sam Bradford when, uh, when Teddy Bridgewater went down with injury. And I know it hasn't, like, worked out great, per se, but you, you see that's kind of the direction they like to go, the known. George Payton seems to wanted to get rid of as much risk as possible. He's risk averse. He and I are like pretty much complete opposites. I'm like, go into the risk, man. Do everything you got to do to go into that risk. But, uh, but no, it, it's, I, I do see a veteran quarterback as the starter next year. Now, who's that going to be? Is that going to be Drew Locke? Is that going to be Teddy? Is that going to be a guy they trade for? He's not I, on I the roster. See, yeah. He's, I, I don't know if he's on the roster, but, uh, 
but I do think that there's a good chance that we're looking at a veteran guy. I don't, I don't think it's going to be a draft guy. No, I don't either. And as we, we, we wrap this up, I got, I got to do this. Cause I absolutely love it. Jewel the fool. Remember the last Ohio state QB our fans wanted. Where is he? Uh, absolutely love it. Cause I got to show some hate to that Ohio state Twitter at my Ohio huddle guys, please get at us at Carl Dummer, MHH at Luke Patterson, LP. Uh, please get at milehighhuddle.com for all of your up to the minute news analysis, rapid reaction and videos. Um, you guys can DM us. I know we get back to everybody sooner rather than later, uh, but just hang in there with us. And again, thank you for your support. Yeah. Thank you guys. And uh, have a great night and a great week for the Broncos. We got Bronco football back on Saturday mm. and uh, can't wait for the chance to, to get a talk about all that. So we love you all. Stay safe out there. Uh, if you're in Denver, uh, breathe cautiously, <laughs> I guess is the way I'd put it. But uh, otherwise, like I said, enjoy this week. Enjoy all the updates and stick with us here at Mile High Huddle. Teddy's better than